Well, howdy folks, welcome back. Uh, it's good that this event should happen right as, uh, right as I need to start recording again. So our lands have fallen into disarray and the current king has strayed from the path of Mott and must commit suicide. Yeah. The principle of righteousness to whose will even monarchs are required to obey what should happen next? Uh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> That's what should happen next. I don't care if there's an instant revolt. Go fuck yourself. So. It's been about, like, what? Five, six, seven years in-game. It's been a few turns. Uh, not much has happened. But you can see things have changed. So let's kind of go through everything like I normally do. Uh, first off, like when starting a campaign, that is. So first off, economy, uh, you can see we're doing pretty fucking well. We're doing pretty fucking well. We're bringing in about 2600 per turn. That's at very high tax rates. Uh, and we've got a war chest of 39,000 gold. And our cities, they're loving the very high tax rate. <laughs> and in fact, are still growing. They are ecstatic right now. They love us. Uh, probably mostly due to this big-ass temple of Serapis, I suppose. No, oh, I don't have livestock to create this. Oh, well. I did end up building my uh, infantry tents, but we'll get into that in a minute. As far as diplomacy goes, I've been using my money to get trade agreements with the people I want trade agreements with. Uh, I didn't go for the Seleucids because they didn't want to trade with me uh, for any reasonable sum of money, and also everyone in the world hates them, so not doing that. I did end up trading with the Indians over here. Very cool looking, by the way. Uh, not trading with the Ptolemies because, you know, <laughs> we're about to fight them. Uh, not trading with these guys because they love the Ptolemies and they want, like, seven grand to trade for. These guys I haven't tried in a while. Welcome, oh, there we go. Cool. Well, we have glad I checked. Reason to accept such terms. And we're also trading with Azagarta, but they may cancel that because they're at war with the uh, Marian Indians here, so that's fine. These other factions, eh. Muscat over here has been bugging me, like, every turn for a defensive alliance, and it's kind of getting on my nerves. Kind of wish I'd never discovered them. Uh, as far as tax rate goes, well, we can we can knock that back down to normal. Note how we're not in the negative. <laughs> not in the negative, even with two armies. We're, we're doing good financially. Oh, I forgot tax. Okay. So I did go for the uh, logistics tech. And while I was recruiting armies and moving across this desert, which took like five turns, uh, I also got signaling for some extra upkeep cost help. And I also got physical conditioning. So extra morale for my melee infantry with the, you know, with, with, with some extra upkeep cost. And the reason being for that is that, well, these units have pretty low base morale as is, so I figured giving them a little extra would help. I also went over here into politics, and you notice my parties are really, really loyal. So I just decided to, you know what, like I'll take Arakamani here, and I'll repeatedly gather support until we become a little more respected. And actually that respect has worn off, unfortunately. So let's get it back real fast. Some of my parties aren't going to be super pleased about this. That's okay. I don't care. Don't care about you. Not my problem. There we go. Now we're admired again. So that's an extra plus 3% morale for all our land units. The extra 5% coming from our uh, technology should give us almost 10% extra morale for our units. So that's super duper handy. Uh, moving on to our armies here. This is the setup I'm going with. A ton of these dudes. Which, by the way, I would have started this this fight uh, two turns ago. But my army caught the plague. Standing right here. Yes. Lovely. It was just my favorite. But, yep. Quite a few Ethiopian swordsmen. Some Ethiopian spearmen. Uh, to just sort of anchor and defend the backsides of the lines against cavalry. Uh, we're keeping our quilted cataphracts. And we've got our Mero archers, who have amazing range. Yes. Uh, as far as our backup army goes, it's quite a few Ethiopian swordsmen. Uh, a, a much larger Hippocontiste uh, horseman regiment, and some more noble bowmen. 
and a baggage train. Uh, the four horsemen are because if she's going to be fulfilling Zira here, if she's going to be fulfilling a reinforcement role, as I expect her to, she will need to arrive at the battlefield quickly. Bringing four horsemen should uh, help with that, and these troops are pretty quick themselves. Uh, the Marrow Archers just as well, and the baggage train will help with some expenditures. Let's see here. Anything else I need to cover? Yes, characters. So we do have a champion now. What's his name? I don't know. Why can't I remember where to see this guy's name? <laughs> he does have a name, right? I feel like he has a name on the campaign map. Whatever. Is his name Gala? His name is Gala. Okay. For some reason I thought that was his title. I'm an idiot. Anyway, he has the skills for extra campaign map movement speed. He has some extra public order for when we get into foreign territory. And uh, extra cunning. Eh, extra cunning. I don't know. They're, they're just the skills he has. Uh, coming along with us is our uh, original sage who has, let's see here, extra cultural conversion just, just to have it, just as his default trait. Um, he has three cultural conversion as well, and some public order and uh, unit replenishment, which is really nice. Extra cunning, because this is all I have. I always get these two options and nothing else. And also some public order and 8% tariff income. This is the newer sage down here, and I think he also has the 8% tariff income, so we have like 16%. Pretty nice. Oh, we actually can't reach this turn. We're going to reach next turn, it looks like. That's fine. We're not moving on a road, so understandable enough, I suppose. So we'll probably burn one turn here, and then we'll have this fight. Diospolis is not well uh, defended, so it'll only take the one army. We have such a big war chest. I mean, we could do so many things with this much money. <laughs> I anticipate that this war will go fairly well. They do have a fleet here. That's worth noting. They could get down into uh, Ptolemaeus Theron in two turns, and in fact, they probably will. Um, pursuant to that, I think I'll actually raise an army here. Do I want to raise it from the Medui dynasty? Yeah, I suppose. Not, not a fleet. Yeah, we'll raise, we'll raise a little. Uh, a little unit here. Sure. Seems like a, a sound investment to have to have some backup troops, you know. Uh we'll we'll definitely want to recruit from the commoners. We'll just it's a great and glorious thing to fight for our cause. We'll just basically put a huge regiment of spearmen to uh, assist in any defense that needs to happen. I think that should be able to handle any fleet with 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 dividends. Let's end the turn real fast cuz I want to get to this siege. I says the singing woman. It's been a long time coming. Uh, it's been about maybe 45 minutes of gameplay to get to this point. Just basically me burning turns. Uh, and, you know, being the, the spy master that I sometimes am and trying to figure out exactly what sort of setups I want for this invasion. Um... I mean, I don't know exactly what kind of forces they have ready for us. I probably could have scouted a little better with my spy, but eh. I don't anticipate them being able to put up a significant resistance. I think they're at war with quite a few people. I'll have to check that before we actually engage this battle. I mean, they have high quality troops, but considering that I'm moving in with two full stacks, and then I'll probably immediately start recruiting, like, AOR units, too, as soon as I start taking their cities. Considering that, I don't think they'll be able to win this war. Overnight, the High Priest mysteriously disappeared. And look, oh, look, there's a correction. Actually, the, the High Priest was mistaken. Our ruler is the manifestation of Mott himself. The people are scared, but no one will dare raise their voice against the crown. <laughs> okay, the political parties are not particularly pleased about that. This one's going to be the annoying one. He's a pacifist. What a loser. He's a xenophobe and a pacifist. This is not a good combination, man. 
jeez. <laughs> uh, this guy needs to go. He needs to go. The other ones have mostly positive stuff. What's the expansion is? Nice. Let's uh, secure their loyalty so this party doesn't rebel on me when I'm not paying attention. Looks like I can't keep that influence either, so... Blech. Oh well. We've got oodles of cash. It's not a big problem. Uh, before we start this, let's take a look. Ptolemies, they own quite a bit of land, but really they're not so powerful on the balance of power meter for such a large force. Like, take the Seleucids, for example. They're not anywhere near their power level. Um, They are at war with quite a few factions, but not too many that are close. Like, Parsa's over here. The Seleucids, I guess, are the ones they're probably mainly fighting, but the Seleucids are dealing with their vassal states. I mean, Asagarda is all the way over here. Cyrenica is, what, over here somewhere, I think? Or, I don't remember where they are. Here? Tyrene? Yeah, here, right? I want to say. Lydia. Lydia's over... Somewhere in the east. Yeah. So we're going to be their most immediate threat, so they'll probably focus a lot of attention on us. That's fine. You do that, buddy. Their their main investment here is a fleet. That's not a strong fleet. Go for it. I'll even get a couple of archers. There you go. We're we're drowning in cash. In fact, like I can turn my tax rate much higher. We're having sixteen positive public order per turn. Time to declare war. They have no allies. I'm not even gonna need the reinforcements, but we will we will fight this because I'm curious to see their like militia troops. Uh, native militia. I've never seen these before. Native archers. Never seen those before either. I want to see some textures. Show me your textures. <laughs> Man, I am deathly terrified of accidentally muting the mic forever while I cough or something. For all I know, it's already happened and I just haven't noticed in one of my videos. <laughs> oh well. It's not like if I accidentally did mute myself, you couldn't just skip ahead in the video, right? It's always a good thing to use your army for the first time. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so first off, let's take a look at the new units. We have our Dilegora, which are Ethiopian spearmen. And they look thusly. They actually are wearing armor. Or... I presume that's armor. It's mostly just, I guess, I guess it's probably like padded cloth, perhaps? Either way, that's more armor than most units from our territory. They've got those nice oval shields, fine looking spears. And then we have our Nesiwir, or our Mero archers. And they have all sorts of skills. Stalk, move hidden in any terrain, hide, scrub in forest, hide, grass, hide, forest, guerrilla deployment. Improved stamina. <laughs> campaign stealth. They can move around the campaign map without being seen. I don't even know what that means. Flaming shots, stamina. Yeah. These guys have guerrilla deployment, so I can just move them like right here. And I think I will. <laughs> Look at that. That's, that is obscene. I love it. It's just disgusting. I love every second of it. Just get right in there. Stamina is excellent. They're just... Jesus Christ, these guys are great. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we're mostly going to focus on moving in through these three pathways here. I like that. In fact, this one's probably the best. Or no, I can't really actually properly move in through there. My archers can do some shit, though. Because of their insane range. Of 175. You will darken the skies. Yep, that gives them good coverage. And, uh... Let's see here. We will do some double lines. Something like this. And this is how I plan to fight most of my battles, at least, like, with big, solid double lines of medium melee infantry with javelins. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. And then, like, on one flank, I'll do, you know, my nice 
heavy spearmen, very heavy spear infantry that can handle cavalry, and uh, on the other flank I'll usually be doing my cataphracts. Quilted cataphracts. Got a Kamani in the back, of course. And let's see what my archers are already shooting people. <sighs> it's good to be king. Alright. Let's just start rushing people up. We're gonna blitzkrieg these fuckers. I mean, there's nothing they can do. They won't be able to outpace these without cavalry. Pew, pew, pew! Get fucked! It, it feels like they're accurate, too. That could just be me, of course. We will dock in the skies! Focus that unit. They're running out. How dare they? Ha! Ah, the hubris on them. Of course, it's worth noting our heavy spear infantry is much slower than the rest of our infantry. Target those. Oh yeah, how do the native militia look? They're a thorax spearmen. No, they're mostly like basket weavers. <laughs> I'm gonna turn down the music just a bit. It's a little pulsing at the moment. You need to relax just a bit, music. It's okay. Everything will be fine. Let's do some let's do some crazy shit. Yeah, look at that. They can't catch us. You know, the townsfolk might actually be able to. Gee, Yarge. Leroy Jenkins. Actually, cavalry, I mean, you're in there. Oh, they left some spearmen in there. That's fine. Do some shit anyway. Oh, I think even our heavy spearmen had some javelins, if I'm not mistaken. I don't like how those native townsfolk are actually successfully chasing my archers away. That makes me sad. Fuck you! Taste cataphract. Taste lots and lots of swordsmen. Oh shit, those guys are actually still here. How dare you. I mean, I guess they can just chase those off the map. <laughs> I'll send those on the way, and I think I'll send my cataphracts to help out in a second. Yeah, let's just about face my cataphracts, because that's going to get annoying. Eventually they will catch them on the edge of the map, you know? <laughs> I think I made my point. My dudes are fast. My dudes are real fast. I like it. Ah, oh, shit. Can you not be alive, please? Okay, thanks, bye. Use fire arrows real quick. Just end that fight, please. I don't have all day. Okay, cool. Get out there. Help my dudes. They're having a bad day. I mean, see, even if... Even if they can... Uh, they have the same amount of speed, they'll still tire out much faster. And my bowmen are... Uh, like, in addition to the improved stamina, they also have heat resistance, too, so... Man, they're just too good. They are going to reach the edge of the map real soon, though, so... Uh, <clears throat> not the best thing. Turn, please. <laughs> I'd really rather my archers not get butchered by fucking citizens after I talk so much awesome shit about them. That would make me sad. <laughs> it may happen. May happen. Kind of catching up. <laughs> it's way more tense than it needs to be. Hey, they actually charged back. Fucking rude. Ooh, they are catching some of them. How dare you? Mmm, you rude sons of bitches. I don't know if local if those citizens can take my archers, even if, you know, I'm not, e even if, I'm sorry, I can't speak English. I was going to say, I don't know if they can take my archers, like, at all. Even though my archers are not intended for any kind of melee. What did I lose, like, three men? <laughs> 21 dudes, oh no. 
<laughs> it's good to be king. Yeah, so I know those were a bunch of militia yahoos, but I, I think that makes my point about the troops. <laughs> Just overwhelm them with masses of swordsmen. Deal with the flanks with spearmen. Significant amount of kills on these, too. And, uh, yeah, shoot, them, shoot the fuck out of them with archers, which you can see even the archers got a decent amount of kills, and I usually don't get good kills out of archers. I didn't lose a single cataphract. That's satisfying. Looks like all of their casualties came from their archers. Makes sense. This is mine now. Thank you. And I shouldn't need to loot any of these cities at all. It's great. I see. I actually have to reconstruct this. That's sad. Just tear all this down and tell them to keep moving. Thirsty for battle. And since these cities, uh, since these settlements are already partially Egyptian, they should convert in terms of happiness relatively quickly. They still have some like Hellenic and desert nomadic, but uh, our sage will help out with that quite a bit. There we go. Go ahead and convert those for me. Yep. We'll be seeing about a 1% change per turn already. As far as AOR units, what have you got here? Hmm. Just Egyptian levies, huh? These were actually Greeks. Greek forces, at least. They look kind of Greek. It's interesting. And then some just Egyptian archers. All men serve the pharaoh. Fantastic. Uh, next turn we'll move out towards Mios Hormos, and I think we'll attack it regardless of this fleet. I'd rather handle this fleet anyway. In mortal combat. They're not much of a threat. They don't have many troops. Like, their ships are really tiny and small. Tiny and small. What a redundant sentence. Let's end the turn. 10 out of 10 sentences brought to you by me, Lysander. Oh my god, I'm not used to going to war with multiple armies and a huge war chest. This campaign feels a lot easier than Sparta. <laughs> it's kind of refreshing. Kind of makes me feel good. It's okay, I'm sure the game will kick me in the dick in a second. There goes that fleet, by the way. Where'd it go? I'm pretty sure it went south to go take that city, right? Right? I don't see it, but that's... Unless it's that right there. I see a boat, but that doesn't mean it's their boat. I have minimal control of the game while it's doing turns. I wish... I wish I could do something while the turns are passing by. Anything. Doesn't matter. I wish I could read, like, the descriptions. I wish I could move the map around. I understand it uses, like, all of the processing power, but give me, like, 5% of that to do something else, please. <laughs> Especially, like, in these longer turns. Uh, Intimidating officer? I don't care. And we get even more cash. Fantastic. Great. We're suddenly losing cash. I guess it's because of these. Uh, pfft. Do I need food? I guess I will need food. Build food, build a temple. We'll get happiness out of that eventually. So their fleet moved, and yeah, there it is. And uh, the only place it can attack is this settlement down here, which, I mean, like, go for it. Pretty sure all these spearmen and these archers and this cavalry unit and the uh, African spearmen and hunters and tribesmen, I think they'll handle this just fine, frankly. Like, oh no, East Coast levies. The Marines, yeah, sure. The archers will be 
a little irritating. It's a lot of archers, but they're in units of 45, or 75, so they're half-strength units. Although I guess their stats are actually what matters. I, I forget how the game works in that sense, like, whether or not it's the stats or the numbers at all. Does it make sense that you'd make them half-strength? Whatever. I'm just gonna stop talking. <laughs> Next. We take this settlement for you, my lord. We take this settlement for rock and roll. Settlement. Our safe are back. All right. At your service. As you command. Let's take a look at Memphis and Alexandria. Uh, Memphis isn't particularly well defended. We're about 25 minutes in, so I'll see you guys on the battle map for this one.